right, can we officially put to rest the theory that the NFL rigged the schedule around Taylor Swift so that she could be in as many games as possible? Can we put that theory to rest? Because you know what? The NFL doesn't even know their own freaking schedule. Welcome, everybody, to JJ9 News, where we talk all things NFL all the time. I'm Jared Gary Nine, representing the 904 from the 602, and today we are yet again ranting about the 2024 NFL schedule that came out last week because there is still some more drama and controversy to be discussed with that. Ignore the Vikings and the Seahawks helmets behind me. I did a video, and I'm literally putting it out right now as this is recording, and I did not change the helmets behind me, so there is a video on JJ9. Go check that out if you haven't already. Uh, it's about Ed Marinero and a weird controversy involving him in 1977 when he signed with the Seahawks. So go check that out. That's why the helmets are like that behind me. But more importantly, about the NFL schedule, there's an interesting quirk in the schedule this year. And the quirk is that there are no bye weeks in week eight. So usually how the bye weeks work is that it's continuous, starting around week five and going until sometime around week 13 or 14, sometime in early December when every team has had their bye, every team will have their bye week in between that time frame, but the weeks will be continuous. So you'll see some teams on bye week seven, some teams on bye in week six, some teams on bye week five. You get the idea. There's only one exception usually, and that is Thanksgiving. No team takes a bye during Thanksgiving, which makes a lot of sense because if teams took a bye on Thanksgiving, the TV schedule would be all off because you have three Thanksgiving games, you have a Black Friday game, a Sunday night football game, and a Monday night football game. So if you have all those games, you only have 10 games in the Sunday afternoon window as it is. And assuming six teams go on by, you then have seven games. That's it. They have to split across six hours with two networks, which would be a disaster. A 4-3 split, it would, they would never go for that. The networks would never go for that. It would be a train wreck. It would be like 1993 with the two bye week system all over again. It would be absolutely terrible. But for the most part, besides Thanksgiving, there are continuous buys from the time the first team takes their buy in week five to the time the final team takes their buy sometime around week 14. That is, for whatever reason, except for week eight. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, why is that the case? Why are there no buys in week eight? Why is there a full slate? Maybe it's because of the trade deadline, and you want to make sure that the teams know their weaknesses and their strengths before deciding whether to buy or sell. Maybe it's the fact that we want teams to trade at the trade deadline, and we don't want players having two bye weeks. So we want as few teams as possible to have a buy before the trade deadline. You could say it's because, you know what, you want a strong slate of games because if you have a game that goes up against the World Series, you want to win in the ratings and you want to put a game against it that will draw. Because obviously you're going to win against the World Series most of the time, but if you have a stinker on there between two teams with one win apiece and the World Series involves a team like the Yankees or the Dodgers, you might be screwed. So there are some reasons why you could think in your mind that there are no bye weeks in Week 8. Turns out none of them are true. Turns out it's just complete coincidence and the NFL had no idea. I'm not even kidding. The NFL had no idea that there were no bye weeks in Week 8 and there were no bye weeks last year in Week 8. So any reason that you have, it's wrong. The real reason is the NFL is clueless. Mike North was clueless when he designed this schedule and had no idea what he was doing. And how we know this is from an AMA that was put out on the NFL subreddit where Mike North and some other people that helped make the schedule, I use help very loosely, it was Mike North's maybe, they talked about the schedule, they answered some questions, they avoided a lot of stuff. It wasn't the best AMA. It was very, very basic surface-level questions. They avoided all the controversial questions. But this was an interesting answer from a question posed by Mag Rokot, who says, Hi, for the second consecutive season, there are no buys in Week 8. Is this just a coincidence or not? Also, the Steelers and Bears do not play a division until Week 11. This is the latest ever since realignment. Thoughts? Thanks. They didn't answer the second question. They completely sidestepped the second question. But about the buys in Week 8, the NFL, you would think they have a good answer for that. You would think that if you're going to answer the question, you have a pretty good answer for why there are no buys in Week 8. Smack down in the middle of the season when a lot of teams want to take the buy. Players have said many times you want to take the buy Week 8 or Week 9. You want to take it around that time, and there are no buys that week. But the reason why? According to Charlotte, total coincidence. And Mike was puzzled by this. He, he said, is that true? Didn't happen last year either? And Charlotte replies, didn't even know that, but that is crazy. And Mike said, totally random. Seriously. The NFL didn't realize that there were no buys week eight, and there were no buys last year in week eight. How do you not know this? 
How do you not know your own freaking schedule? How is that a coincidence? Nothing about the bye weeks in terms of when they are should be coincidence. A coincidence could be a team having the same bye week back-to-back -back years. If a team has a bye week in week 11 one year and bye week in week 11 the next year, all right, coincidence. A team playing the same team off a of bye or before a bye in back-to-back -back years, so let's say the Jaguars are at home and then they take their bye and it's been like that for two straight years, that's coincidence. But this, no buys in week eight, that's a coincidence? Last year, no buys? Coincidence? You should be able to look at the schedule, notice a giant gap in the buys, and say, huh, you know what? That's a bit odd. And on top of that, this just shows how incompetent Mike North is at his job. I'm calling for his head. This is incompetence, because you know what? This is hypocrisy at its finest. Because remember the video I put out yesterday? I put out a video yesterday that in the AMA, he said that the league tries to avoid repeat matchups in Week 18. They don't want the same teams playing each other over and over again at the same cities. I talked about that yesterday. Go check that if you haven't already. I'll leave the link in the upper right corner and a link in the description down below. Now, I talked about why it shows how bad Mike North is at his job because in Week 18 last year, you had the Bears playing at the Packers and the Lions hosting the Vikings. And sure enough, this year, Vikings at Lions, Bears at Packers, Week 18. So, good job. You didn't repeat. You didn't avoid any repeats, I should say, on that one. And NFC East, You've had the same matchups in the last three years. Cowboys, Commanders, Giants, Eagles. Those were the same matchups for the last three years. So you're really doing a good job at that. You could create a rotation if you were careful enough and you weren't lazy and bad at your job, but it, it's crazy. But with that being said, you say that you base it off of history with Week 18? How can we trust you to do that when you can't even notice that for the second straight year, no team had a buy in Week 8? We expect you to study the history and know the history of the schedule. And you revolve around that. You base your decisions around that. And that is your job. And you can't even remember one year ago? Did you not even look at last year's schedule and notice this? Even if you didn't remember that no teams had buys in week eight last year. Did you not look at last year's schedule and be like, oh, no teams had a buy in week eight. Let's not do that again. That's odd. You say you go off of history. You literally say you go off of history when making the schedule, but you don't know your history. And it's not like we're asking to go back to 1989 or something like that. It's not like someone's asking, well, for whatever reason, the 49ers had, I'm just making this up. The 49ers had a game against the Saints in week five, and then they had a buy in week six. Obviously not 1989. Let's say 1990, because obviously there were no buys in 1989. But let's say 1989, again, making this up, they played the Saints in week five, then had a buy in week six. And then this year, they play the Saints week five, had a bye week six. Again, completely making this up. That's not true in the slightest bit, but it's not like we're saying, why is that the case? It happened in 1990. Why is that the case again this year? Why did it repeat? We're not asking that. We're just saying there are no buys this year in week eight. Why? And why were there no bye weeks last year week eight? And your response is, oh, we had no idea. Just don't all coincidence. We didn't know there were no buys in week eight. Did you know there were no buys in week eight? We didn't know that. Oh my goodness. Can you imagine a general manager drafting a wide receiver in the first round of the NFL draft and someone asks, why did you draft a receiver in the first round this year when you also drafted one last year in the first round? And your response to that question is, wait, we did? I I, I didn't know we did that. We, we drafted a receiver in the first round this year? And we did this year too? That is, uh, wow, that is crazy. That is total coincidence. Totally random. Did not know that. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. That is, that's funny. That's funny. I did not know that. The GM would be fired on the spot. The general manager will be fired on the spot for that. And rightfully so. I, I don't get this at all. I really don't get this. Every single day that passes, the NFL schedule gets worse and worse. And this might be the worst of the bunch. The fact that they didn't know their own schedule, the fact that they didn't realize there were no buys in Week 8 this year and no buys in Week 8 last year, crazy to me. Absolutely crazy. And again, what's funny about an AMA is that you don't have to answer every question. You can pick and choose what questions you want to answer. They choose to answer this question. This thought, they thought I should say, this made them look good. They thought that with all the controversy surrounding Mike North and how bad of a schedule he created this year, they thought this made the NFL and Mike North look good. It didn't. It didn't. It makes you look way worse. It makes you look like an incompetent fool who doesn't know what he's doing. So, good job again. You, you really outdid yourself with the schedule this year. You should be very, very proud of yourself with how badly you bungled this schedule. But you don't even know you bungled it. Because you don't even know your own schedule. So maybe I'm expecting too much of the people that literally design the schedule. And their only job is to design the schedule. Maybe I'm expecting too much out of them.
crazy. What are your thoughts on this? What are your thoughts on no teams having a buy in week eight? The fact that it's happened back to back years. Do you buy the NFL's excuse that it's a coincidence? Do you think there's an underlying meaning that they don't want us to know about? Which I'm guessing not. I'm guessing they're just that bad at their jobs. But let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And that is going to do for this episode of JG9 News. Be sure you like and subscribe. Helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check my main channel, Jaguar Gear 9, where we talk all things NFL history all the time. Until next time, this is Jaguar Gear 9 signing off. And as always, go Jags.